Good evening, and welcome to the campus of UW-Whitewater. I'm your host, Sam Matheny, and alongside me is my co-host, Matt Bruzis. Joining us in a moment is our special guest, Austin Dowdle. But first, we ask you to please excuse our momentary interruption of sports from your regular daily schedule. Guys, let's get right into it. Two of the top Big 12 teams are off to an unexpectedly slow start. The Texas Longhorns are currently 2-1, coming off a loss to TCU. Oklahoma is on a two-game losing streak after their loss to Iowa State. With the Red River Showdown this weekend, who needs this win most and why? I'm going to go with Oklahoma Sooners, and I think that because since they were preseason favorites to get into the college football playoff, into the Final Four teams, they, were, they had all the hype surrounding this season, and they've underperformed. It's a defense that really has to show up in a big way to set their season right, and I think that their defense and Lincoln Riley will have the pressure on that defense and the defensive coordinator to get, uh, get stops in the defensive end because we know what Spencer Riley is going to do on the offensive side of the ball. I have to disagree with you, and I think that's because it's too late for Oklahoma to make it into the college football playoffs. I think it's going to be Sam Ellinger in Texas as needs, as what's going to have to prove this weekend. I think they're going to have to come out strong and score a lot of points because I think it's going to be who scores the most points as there's going to be no defense at all in this game. I'm going to disagree with you, Austin. I'm going to say the Oklahoma Sooners um, need to win this game the most. I think their two early losses is pivotal to their success as a team. Coach Lincoln Riley, he's not used to that. He's had three Heisman quarterbacks uh, candidates in the last four years, so you know he's been really excited about the season, and if he doesn't get a win this week, it's a disappointment. Yeah, I think even with two losses, I think Oklahoma could get into the college football playoff. Alabama, uh, a couple years ago, got in with two losses. They were 10-2, not a conference champion, but I still think that Oklahoma has a shot. If they continue to play better, continue to win the eye test, if you will, uh, criteria that the committee ranks at the end of the season. So I think that if they can play better than they have these past couple weeks, they're going to be in good shape. I'm going to have to disagree with you there. And I, the reason Alabama made it into the college football playoffs with two losses is because the SEC is extremely better than the Big 12. And Alabama had one of the best quarterbacks in the league that year, and they lost to a Georgia team who also made it into the college football playoffs. Now guys, out of these two quarterbacks, which is Spencer Rattler for the Sooners and Sam Ellinger for the Longhorns, which do you think has the brightest future and why? I'm going to go with Sam Ellinger because I think that his maturity at Texas really showed, even though his offensive talent, offensive weapons around him has decreased, he's still shown that he can be a proven competitor and a proven winner in the Texas uh, system, and I think he's going to have a long, uh, great career and longevity in the NFL. Yeah, I like Ellinger, but I think it's going to be Rattler. I think coming in as a true freshman, he's been having really good games. Last game he had 300 passing yards, two touchdowns, and he threw a pick, but that pick was very controversial, and I don't think I think that should have been called a pass interference. So I think it's going to be big to see what Rattler does here going forward. Going along the lines of what Austin said, I think Spencer Rattler is the real deal. He had 11,000 passing yards when he was in high school, which was an Arizona State record, the only player to ever surpass 11,000 yards. I think that's huge when it comes to just the teamwork that he instills in his mind and the way he plays the game is different from what everyone else is doing. Yeah, but I think if like, I think you can't really focus on individual success more, you have to focus on team success and what Sam Ellinger has done in Texas is a better team aspect than what uh, Spencer Rattler has done or will do at Oklahoma because of that defense. And next up, we will discuss how COVID-19 has had a big role in the postponement of NFL games. We'll be right back. Please excuse this commercial break. Warhawks know what it takes to become champions. At the University of Wisconsin Whitewater, our student athletes pursue excellence with a determination that inspires everyone on campus. Warhawks are smart. Warhawks are strong. Warhawks value service. We prepare our student athletes for life after college. The University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Come be part of the Warhawk family. As an Army ROTC cadet at Whitewater, you have the opportunity to develop into a great leader while learning and applying the Army values to your everyday life. Within ROTC, you have the chance to travel overseas in the CULP program to train with other militaries, attend many elite Army schools such as Airborne and Combat Diver, and you have the opportunity to attend conferences and guest lectures by some of the Army's top-ranking officers. Our Warhawk cadets participate in many extracurricular activities, Division III sports, Greek life, intramural sports, among many other team-building and community service events. 
Being a cadet at Whitewater is more than just being part of the Army. It's also about being active members in our community and coming together to form a family atmosphere. Anyone who wants to be a part of something bigger than themselves while developing themselves professionally should consider UW-Whitewater ROTC. To sign up for UW-Whitewater ROTC, go to the fourth floor of McCutcheon Hall to room 417. Hey everyone, and welcome to this quarantine edition of Inside Warhawk Football. I'm your host, Sammy Huggins, and alongside me is head football coach, Kevin Bowles. Coach, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing fantastic, Sam. Looking forward to sitting here and talking with you. So what is the team doing this semester since there is no sports going on? You bet. I mean, it's, it's, um, we basically what we've done is we've transitioned our spring, which was delayed um, in the sense that's, I guess, I, the way I look at it is we were not uh, able to have spring football because uh, on March 20th, the students went home and we run our spring practices in April. And so basically what we've done is we've transitioned uh, that time period or delayed that time period to really this fall. And so really it's, it's very typical um, or very similar, I should say, to what we would do in the spring. How is the team doing mentally and physically during this pandemic and how are they staying healthy? Well, and that's, and that's what it's all about, Sam. That's ultimately what it's all about is, um, you know, the first thing is one, um, the mental health aspect of, of moving forward with your goals. And, that, and that's the way we look at it is that um, when a person's moving forward with your goals and your objectives, whatever that may be, graduating with a business degree, um, or a history degree, whatever it may be, or progressing with your passion and your love for your sport. And that's the thing where we've been very fortunate to have the support by our administration. Mr. Callahan, our athletic director, our administration, um, our chancellor and provost to be able to support us in, in being able to train with the young men. So we've been able to train with them. We're working in pods at this time, um, which is a, a different mode of practice than what we've had, uh, but we're together. And, and that to me is the biggest piece that, uh, that we're moving forward. And obviously in a very safe uh, manner that, that requires us to follow a lot of protocols to, to keep people safe. Well, thank you for being here today, Coach, and I look forward to seeing you next week. We'll see you next week, Sam. That was this week's edition of Inside Warhawk Football on UWW-TV. Welcome back. That was head football coach Kevin Bullis giving his thoughts about practice during the pandemic. Two NFL games were postponed this past weekend due to the coronavirus. This had pushed back the Steelers Titans and the Patriots Chiefs game. The virus is even affecting superstars like Cam Newton, who was not able to participate on Monday because he was, had the COVID. Do you think the NFL has handled this situation correctly? I think they have, and I think that they've done enough to put protocol in where they can play during a pandemic. They're playing a contact sport during a pandemic. And I think that since they're going through the, they're putting in daily testing, they're putting in tracing uh, to monitor who you've come in contact with so they can uh, stop the spread of the virus. And I think this is also kind of like how the MLB started with the Cardinals and Marlins having uh, an outbreak in their clubhouses. And I think this is going to be a wake up call for the rest of the NFL. I think they're doing a lot, Matt, but I don't think they're doing enough. I think they need to do something more like what MLB did during the last week of their games. They all got into a hotel and they were not allowed to leave. There was no outside contact from the outside world. And that's something that's happening here and that's why Cam Newton got infected and that's why he had to sit out. Someone was not, someone in his bubble was not being good about, the, about being um, about social distancing. I think if the NFL wants to postpone games, it really needs to be thought out more, guys. It, it infuriated me how the Patriots and Cam Newton were only given a single day to recover and play their next game as it moved from Sunday afternoon to Monday night. I think that was completely ridiculous. I understand they want to keep the season moving forward, but I think they need to take more into consideration when scheduling these games. Yeah, I think that's just it, Sam, but I think they want to keep the season moving forward. They, they're in a tight, they're in a 17 Week, 16, 17 week schedule, including the bye week. But I think that that's why they have to uh, keep it rolling. They have TV deals and they have schedules uh, and routines of these players and staff that have to be met, or else the performance isn't going to be what it would if there um, if there wouldn't if there was was these layoffs with the bye weeks that we see. 
So I just think that they have to keep moving forward. Um, and I just think it, I have to think it's not fair to the Week 5 opponents that the Patriots then play this week. They're coming off more rest, and I just think that would not be fair to the rest of the, the, rest of the opponents. And that just gives an, an, an upside there for and gets Cam Newton healthy when he's not, not healthy and shouldn't be playing. Matt, you brought up the TV deals and all that. Honestly, I just want to throw that in the garbage because honestly, with the TV deals, I understand that's a big thing that the NFL is about making the money. But at the same time, I don't think that it's fair because these players are putting their lives at risk. We've seen the right tackle of the Denver Broncos, for example. Uh, Jawan James putting his, his career to the side to keep his family and himself safe. So I think that's going to be the big thing. Yeah, but Sam, the money and the fans are, is what keeps the NFL going without money and the fans. And you need, you need to keep playing the games to keep the fans happy too. There's not an NFL. It just, there's not the funding. There's not anything. And if you don't have the backing from the fans, then you're not going to have a good NFL team. Yeah, but I think that you go to Minnesota and what Kirk Cousins said in the offseason. He said, if I get COVID, I get COVID. And then you heal and then you come back. But it's also on the, on the staff and the coaches to put the players in the best position to succeed. If you have COVID, it's just like a regular other injury. You have to have the best backups in place so you can uh, be successful on any given Sunday. You know, I agree that the precautions they're taking are good, but I don't think it's enough. I think protecting every player and staff member isn't really realistic when it comes to this game. Next up, we're going to take an early look at college basketball in the state of Wisconsin and then see all of our predictions. Please excuse this commercial break. UW-Whitewater Intramural Sports, we have a motto, a sport for everyone and everyone in a sport. Had a blast. Always have fun at Intramurals. Every day we strive to go above and beyond that goal by providing healthy exercise, promoting leisure education, and giving students that competitive atmosphere they are looking for. Yes! 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 It's exciting. Brings me back to those uh, high school days with Friday Night Lights. With our 25 different intramural sports offered, we guarantee that we have a sport for you. Go to our website and find your sport today. The UC can get you connected to all your basic needs. Grab a coffee and a meal. Study by the fireplace. Bowl, play, and relax when you want a break from homework. The UC has much more to offer to Whitewater students. Go to the UC's website to see what's going on this week. Video One Media Services provides accomplished students the opportunity to enhance their college experience by working with real-world clients. In addition, we provide clients local and affordable video options to better enhance their media needs. For more information on how Video One Media Services can help you with your next media project, email or call our office at 262-472-5659. Hello, I'm Dominic Ottens, and this is your UWW-TV Sports Update. Three WEAC football players have been named finalists for the William V. Campbell Trophy. One of the finalists for the award is UW-Whitewater's Twin Miners. This award recognizes the best football scholar athlete in the nation in all divisions. The Wisconsin Badgers starting quarterback Jack Cohn suffered a non-contact football inj injury during practice. The team is now looking at redshirt freshman Graham Mertz to start. Head coach Paul Chris does not know how long Cohen will be sidelined. The Milwaukee Brewers were swept by the Los Angeles Dodgers in two games of the four different National League wildcard series. The Brewers ended their season with a 29-31 record. 
And we'll have more sports coming up right after this. Warhawks know what it takes to become champions. At the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater, our student-athletes pursue excellence with a determination that inspires everyone on campus. Warhawks are smart. Warhawks are strong. Warhawks value service. We prepare our student-athletes for life after college. The University of Wisconsin-Whitewater. Come be part of the Warhawk family. Chicago Cubs were eliminated from the playoffs by the Miami Marlins in three games. The Cubs claim the National League Central Division regular season title with a record of 34 and 26. The Chicago White Sox took a first round exit after losing two out of three games to the Oakland Athletics. The White Sox finished their season with a 35 and 25 record, good for second place behind the Minnesota Twins in the American League Central Division. The Chicago Bears fell to a 3 and 1 record on the season after losing to the Indianapolis Colts 19 to 11 on Sunday. The Bears will have a short week this week as they play Tampa Bay on Thursday Night Football in Chicago. For more updates, stay tuned to UWW-TV, check us out at uwwtv.org, or tune in to our 24-hour stream service at reslife.uww.edu backslash stream. I'm Dominic Ottens, and this has been your sports update on UWW-TV. Welcome back to Please Excuse Our Momentary Interruption of Sports from Your Regular Daily Schedule. College basketball in Wisconsin hasn't seen a deep tournament run since the Badgers in 2015. The Golden Eagles haven't won a tournament game in six years themselves. Which team do you expect to have a better season? I'm going to go with the Badgers. Coming off a Big Ten regular season uh, championship, um, I think that they're going to have um, a lot of returning sophomores and juniors coming into the fold who were thrown into the fire last year, they, who had no experience, they were young guys, and now they've got some experience, they've got some experience under Coach Greg Gard, and I think that Nate Reavers is going to be an X factor down low, rebounding and uh, controlling the paint. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Everything you said there was pretty spot on. I think the, the Badgers are going to have the better of the seasons. Coming off that um, Big Ten t um, championship in the regular season was big for them, and they, have a, they had a very young team last year. And, like you said, Nate Reavers, third team, uh, all Big Ten. He's going to be a big, po big point for them to be in the paint and stop the po points in the paint. You know, guys, you know what I hate the most? Badger basketball. And this is why. They play so freaking slow. I don't like it when they, they take their time. I understand that it's a, a Big Ten way of playing basketball. But when you look at these other teams, they're playing so at a fast pace, and I really like that, and I think that Marquette's going to have a better season, because without Marcus Howard, I think they're going to have to learn how to change their game plan and adapt. I also like the addition of All-American All -American Dawson Garcia. He's 6'11 and can shoot the lights out of the gym. Yeah, but I think that's how Greg Gard wants to play, and that's why people come to Wisconsin, and that's why he's not going to get five-star recruits like Jalen Johnson and Patrick Baldwin and like, like uh, Tyler Hero decommitted from Wisconsin. I think that's why he's going to get those grinded-out players and the players that are going to commit to a system, and that's why Greg Gard has shown some success. It's proven that he's, you know, out last year the results show, winning the Big Ten regular season, uh, regular season title, and then what could have been a deep run into the playoffs is not for the pandemic, but I think that's why Greg Gard is so uh, efficient at getting those type of recruits. Sam, you said it yourself, that's Big Ten basketball. Big Ten wants to get in the half court and grind that defense out and get the ball to the big men, and that's why the, the Big Ten always has the best big men every year. So I, I think that's the way they play, and I think it's been very successful for them for years. Matt touched a little bit on the recruits that we were talking about, such as Tyler Harrow and Jalen Johnson, deciding not to play basketball in their home state. Why is it? Yeah, I think it's because of the uh, taking your talents elsewhere to, uh, to go against uh, top-tier talent. The, obviously, we know that these guys are going to be one and done if you're a five-star, four-star recruit. So that's why they're going to show NBA scouts what they can do against top-tier talent. Next up, we will have all our predictions for the biggest games of the week. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. What does it mean to be a Warhawk? It means allowing myself to dream big and think outside the box. Pushing the limits of what I think is possible. Seeing ideas through from start to finish. Collaborating with professors and peers. And seizing opportunities in the community to put my knowledge to use. I'm studying abroad, learning another language, and listening to the stories of others. 
I'm making lifelong friends and fearlessly sharing my gifts with the world. As a war hawk, I stay balanced, take great care of myself, and get out of my comfort zone. I refuse to let the past determine my future, and I'm taking confident steps in the direction of my dreams. Sometimes it doesn't make sense, and other times it couldn't be more exciting. But I will keep my goals in mind and never quit. Because that, that's the Warhawk way. Turn us on. Flip them off. 91.7 WSUW. 91.7 is a student-run radio station serving the Whitewater area with a variety of original programs, live sports broadcasting, community events, and more. So turn us on, 91.7 FM, or stream us live at 917theedge.com. UWW-TV has been an important part of the campus and community since 1980. Not only providing on-air learning opportunities for broadcast journalists and electronic media production students, but educating and entertaining our audiences with award-winning news, live sports coverage, original programming, as well as dedicating the mission to developing creative collaborations throughout campus. For more information, visit our website, our 24-7 stream, and like us on Facebook. Check us out because you got to see what's on UWW-TV. Whitewater Athletics, a relentless pursuit of excellence across 22 sports, powered by a tradition of success. 20 national championships, 17 since 2002, 61 individual national titles, 24 national athletes of the year, 616 All-Americans, 115 Conference Scholar Athletes of the Year, 1,500 community service hours annually. Be a part of the tradition and join the Warhawk family. Welcome to the University Bookstore. The University Bookstore provides students with the opportunity to purchase apparel, gift items, textbooks, snacks, supplies, and other necessities right here on campus. The bookstore is also home to textbook rental where you can find many of your required textbooks. Our friendly staff always goes the extra mile to provide customers with a quick and pleasant experience. Visit the bookstore today to find great deals on everything you need to succeed as a Warhawk. Welcome back to the show. Now we're going to give our takes on some key matchups this week. With the highly anticipated Red River Showdown, I'm looking for Coach Lincoln Riley to have his third straight victory against the Longhorns. I think their receiving core is too well-rounded. Having five players with over 100 yards, I have Oklahoma winning this game. What are your thoughts? I'm also I'm going to agree with you, Sam. I think Oklahoma does take this one. I think that Spencer Rattler uh, down the stretch is going to be uh, prove. Uh, too big and I think he comes up big going, we're going from last uh, game where he didn't come up big I think he comes up big. I'm gonna have to disagree with you guys because um, Oklahoma coming off two straight losses for the first time since 1999 and Texas has not been relevant since Colt McCoy so I see Ellinger coming out strong with his 900 yards he has this year 15 touchdown and only two interceptions I see Texas winning by big. And both teams that knocked the, both the Cubs and the Brewers out of the playoffs which is the Dodgers and Padres they face off in the NLDS. Guys who do you have? I'm gonna go with the Dodgers I think they have too much offense for the Padres even though I, it'll be enough offense to win them the series the Padres showing that they can bring out the bats in a big way and they show that against the Cardinals I think it's the Dodgers especially with that starting pitching. I'm gonna have to go with Padres because I think they have the starting pitching 
and I think they have the role players like Hosmer. I think it's going to be a really big game, and I think it's going to go all. The, it's going to go to the distance, and it's going to be a fun series. But I got the Padres, and I have the Padres as well. I think Manny Machado is going to show Clayton Kershaw who's boss. Guys, going back to football, who do you think wins against the Colts and Browns? I'm going to go with the Colts. That defense looked really good against the Bears on this past Sunday. They're going to. Wreck the, wreck the field, turn the uh, field in their favor, give Phil Rivers short field position to work with, and the Browns' offense is too inconsistent. I think the Browns are going to come out strong in the first half, but then, like you said, Matt, there's going to be that there's going to be that addition at halftime where the Colts' defense is going to take over. Phillip Rivers is going to go strong in the fourth quarter. Although the Cleveland Browns put up 49 on the Cowboys last season, I still don't think Baker Mayfield has proved his worthiness of being the number one draft pick a few years ago. Um, I have the... I have the Colts beating the Bears this week. I also I have think the Colts beating the Browns this week. My yeah. bad. I, have the Colts I also think the one of the more uh, underrated trades in the offseason was DeForest Buckner, who was on the front line of the Colts. He has really manned down. He has really upped the ante on that defense. He really sets the tone for everyone in the back end. He gets the coverage sacks. He really does it all on the front line. The, the, the Colts did have to give up a first round pick for him, but it was well worth it. That's a great point you bring up. DeForest Buckner is a huge piece to that team. And I have the Browns losing against the Colts this week. Yep, and I think that's a good point, Matt. My thing is, though, is I like Phillip Rivers with that offensive line. That is something that he hasn't seen in all of his career with the Chargers. He's had a very poor offensive line every year, having to get out of the pocket and rush his throws. So that's why I like that Phillip Rivers on this Colts team. And I think Phillip Rivers is just more experienced than Baker Mayfield. That'll do it for us tonight. Thank you for watching, and tune in next time to hear more hot takes all around the world of sports. This has been Please Excuse Our Momentary Interruption of Sports from your regular daily schedule on UWW-TV.